love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. G and Douglas. G, hey man, what's going on? How can I help? Um, I've been buying some pro short uh, ETFs and mutual funds, basically as insurance. So if the market ever drops, they should do well and basically make up for any losses I have in my traditional portfolio. But with what you've been saying, I kind of want to put more money into them and you know maybe pull some cash out the market when oh so wait, so am i do i feel like i'm do you feel like i'm i'm scaring you about the world and the markets it's not just scare me but i mean i know that every couple of years it drops a thousand points or whatever so yeah well so so okay what, what investment are we, are we talking about here what is this what is this vehicle um, you're using i have sqqq it's a pro short uh, mutual fund and i also have a spxu i think is what it's called it's also another uh, pro short Okay, SQQQ. Power shares, uh, let's see, that is um, pro, oh, it's pro shares ultra short QQQ, uh, which is, okay, so for our audience listening, hey, what, what does that mean? What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? Here's what we're talking about QQQ is well known as an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ, basically the NASDAQ, call it NASDAQ 100, right? So these are the biggest companies within the NASDAQ. Um, and the, in fact, QQQ as a holding is 103 stocks. And you're going to go down the list. It's going to be Apple and Amazon, and Microsoft and Facebook and Alphabet and so forth. SQQQ, on the other hand, is, a com is an ETF. It's a holding vehicle, let's say, that is, is short all of these stocks. And it's, and it's not just short them one, one time. It's short them 3x. It's 300% negative leveraged. So to your point, you think to yourself, oh, well, okay, well, if the market drops, this thing goes up. Remember, shorting is effectively a hedge against markets going down. A short, you make money when markets go lower. And that's exactly what these are designed to do. So SQQQ is short NASDAQ. And short the NASDAQ, call it 100, times three. And... So a couple of thoughts here, and, and, and you're owning this for, again, for protection, right? Like you're, you're, you're trying to offset if the market goes down. That's your point of doing well, that? I've gotten to the point where I kind of feel like I could actually make money off of it. Uh, Cause like I said, I have my traditional investments, you know, the, the regular mutual funds and stuff. And I, I pump into those, but you know, with what you're talking about, I should pump more money into this short. <laughs> well, so here's a couple of thoughts here. I'd be careful with that. There's there's a couple of, of thoughts here. And, and listen, you and I both know, and, and you, if you're buying these things, you've obviously <clears throat> been an investor for a while. You at least under, you understand markets, obviously. And just a well, couple of well, reminders. Let's not go that far. <laughs> well, okay. That's, why, okay. that's why That's why. you're listening to Money Matters in the morning. So God bless you. So number one, markets over time are a positive return game. S&P 500, NASDAQ, yes, there have been periods of time where there's been great carnage. But over time, you look at markets and, and about a little more than half of the time, call it 55 to 60 percent of the time, we get a positive monthly return out of stocks. OK, um, we, we, we have to remember that because over time we take those bad periods of time and they might be a month, it might be two months, it might be six months. Because we know over time, we're going to have slightly more positive months to outweigh the bad ones, right? So number, so number one, over time, vehicles like this that just blatantly are always short, they're always short. They just stay negative against the market. They're, they're also negative. Against, so they're a negative against something that has a bias to go higher over time. So right out of the gate, it makes these, it starts to get some cracks in in the surface of a product like this. Number two, remember that this is shorting in a whole index of companies that is actually a strength bias index, meaning that the reason that the NASDAQ 100 or QQQ owns Apple and Amazon and Microsoft and Intel and NVIDIA and PayPal and Gilead Sciences and Starbucks, by the way, these are all companies within the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Kraft Heinz, by the way, is part of this NASDAQ 100. Of course, Alphabet, which is Google, uh, Amgen, biotech company, um, Netflix. These are The reason these companies are in the NASDAQ 100 is because it's a success bias index. These companies have to do well to get there. And in order to stay there, they have to continue to do well. So to some extent, this is a vehicle that is shorting against an index 
that by nature only allows successful companies to be in it, right? So you start to, I'm starting to build this case here that these vehicles may not make as much sense as, as you think. Here's the third part of this that is probably the most important piece. On the surface, we think of, most investors think of these, these vehicles as, okay, well, if I'm 3X short the market, that means that, doesn't it mean, intuitively, you say, okay, that means triple, whatever it goes down, I should get triple the upside. So negative 10%, right? I should be up, what, 30, right? Or if the NASDAQ goes down to, by 25%, I should be, what, up three times that to the upside. So I should be up 75%, right? It doesn't work that way because these are these get reset daily. They get reset every single day. So it's not as though you can just say, look, oh, last year was net negative 10% for the NASDAQ. My QQQ, my short QQQ, so SQQQ was up 30. It doesn't work that way because every single day you restart from zero. So if you have one really positive day, let's say you get an up 3% day on the NASDAQ, NASDAQ pops higher because this is short, you will get a negative to the downside. So you'll be down 10% in one day. And then if you're down 10% in one day, the problem is the negative, the, 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 the arithmetic of negative returns. Remember, what do you have to do to get out of a 10% hole? It's not a 10% gain to get back to even anymore, is it? You've got to go up closer to 15% to get out of a 10% hole. So you're in a vehicle that short a success bias index uh, in an environment that goes up more often than it goes down, right? And then the third component here is the math works against you because you have one good day in markets, you dig yourself a 10, 10% hole, it takes 10 or 15, it takes 15, close to 15% to get out of it. So you've gotta be really careful. And I guess my point here is I'm trying to save you from yourself on these. They are not the the, uh, the hedging vehicles that you'd like them to be. Now, if you're going to use these things, which I don't use, I, I don't like these at all. I think that they're somewhat misleading. Investors think they're getting something that they're not. It's another reason I can't stand these vehicles. Just know that you can't just buy this and it gives you this nice long-term hedge or short against the NASDAQ. It doesn't work that way. You These only work on a day-to-day-to-day basis. So if you're going to own these things, you literally own them for a very short period of time. And then what are we doing? Well, we're getting into this very, very intricate timing game. Timing over larger periods of time is difficult, but you start to get timing on an intricate basis on a daily basis. That I know you know. Is a, that, that's a game that, that you can't win. So I just want you to be really careful. So when, when, I, when I jump up and down on the soapbox against something, I like to at least give you something that, I, that, that would be a good idea. And here's, here, here's an alternative to that. I personally don't want to see folks buying these daily, inverse, triple leveraged short products. I think that they're a disaster waiting to happen. And by the way, we saw that with the vol- there remember not that long ago when volatility spiked up, these these short volatility indices ETF, some are long volatility, some are short, some of these blew up. Literally the, the ETF structure went down 99%. I don't want to see that. I, I want you to be careful about that here. So instead if you're going to hedge yourself and you want an area, and this is where this, just the fundamentals of diversification start coming back into play, remember what's happened to interest rates. We have seen, for, we, had all, we had over half a decade with almost zero interest rates. So if you want to be safe with money, you got nothing for it. Today, that's changed. The Fed's raised rates, interest rates in general have gone up. Now, a one-year treasury pays about two and a quarter percent. You know, a two-year treasury is paying over 2.5%, which is more than the 10-year treasury started the year at. So we've gotten this somewhat of a gift in the fact that interest rates have gone up in a, in a, in a material way. Nobody's getting rich off 2%. I get that. But it's a material change from the way we have op- the interest rate market has operated in the last decade or so. And now that we can get 2%, 3% on, relative, on, on short-term bonds, that that is a hedge, not a triple inverse leveraged uh, backwards ETF that shorts fundamentally, for the most part, very strong companies. V- two very different 
approaches here. I'm taking the more conservative approach, which we typically will do here. And that means if you want to hedge, own treasuries, own short-term treasuries, because at least today you get paid two, two and a half percent. Anytime I, I jump up and down and I don't like a product or vehicle or investment, I want to at least give you some sort of alternative. That's what we're doing here today. So much to talk about here. We'll go. We'll continue to go to the phone. wonderful question. Uh, G, by the way, thank you for, for your call. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step guide, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.